So you see, children love the oral tradition. They love to be read to, even when they've learned how to read. Hi, I'm Miss Carol, and I'm an early childhood teacher at Acorn Hill Waldorf Kindergarten and Nursery. I've been teaching kindergarten, um, in our case it's multi-age kindergarten, ages three through six. I've been asked to talk a little bit about why we tell stories. We are storytellers as early childhood teachers. We tell stories that have been handed down for eons and eons from every country on earth. All of the legends and also Grimm's fairy tales, we take an assortment of fairy tales from all different cultures in our case and bring them to the children. It's because the oral tradition started way before there was a written language. And so oral traditions have been handed down for, as I said, eons and eons. And so we start with that, with children as young as two and a half years old. They continue this through the grades in a Waldorf school as well. They are still telling a lot of their content through stories first, but then they go into the written word, of course. But all starts in early childhood in a kindergarten in a Waldorf school. Well, oral storytelling uh, started simply with, obviously, with words, and they weren't recorded. Um, the only way they were passed down was f through tradition. So from parent to child, child to the next child, as time went on, as they grew up and had um, stories, to, they carried with them from their for former generation. And there was not much written at that time. Eventually, of course, there was. There was they were recorded and written down in one way or another when letters and language, um, written language was developed. However, the first thing a child, a baby hears, even in the womb or even in, before they're born, is sound. So everything starts with sound. And they're attuned to sound. In fact, our songs are all pretty much sung with the, using the pentatonic scale, which are five different tones. And that's why the children respond so well when we say simple things like, gathering by the front door. Instead of using my words to say, please go to the front door, <laughs> They respond just like that um, because it's a, it's a song and as certain tones are being used, they are attuned to them. They are very much attuned to them. So same is similar to our storytelling. Sound came first. So the children identify with that right away. And even if you notice at home, children love to be read to. I had a kindergartner one time who I discovered on my own could read. I didn't know he could read but he was sitting in a chair reading every single thing that was on the bulletin board in the teacher's room. I came in to see who it was, and it was George. I said, George, you can read? And he goes, yeah, shh, don't tell my mother I can read, because then she'll stop telling me stories at night. So you see, children love the oral tradition. They love to be read to, even when they've learned how to read. In order to tell stories, even tales from long, long ago, Waldorf teachers and other storytellers as well are trained on how to tell a story. It's an art. It is an artistic approach to an old told tale that's been told for many, many years, and many, in some case, centuries. In order to make it alive and enliven it, we are taught how to do that. All storytellers on earth are, some of them are taught, some of them don't have to be taught, <laughs> but there are a lot of storytellers on earth who do this for a living. And one of the techniques or suggestions that was made to me in my teacher training by a very well-known storyteller was to elevate myself just before I start my story into another space, into another place, and to go there while I'm telling the story because it, it enlivens the story not to simply be reading something off a page or even just to tell it like you've memorized it. And it's not done in our case with a lot of emphasis on words or gestures or emotions. It's told in a, in a fairly, a voice full of warmth and careful execution because we're also taking we are also take speech classes so that enunciation is really key when a child is hearing 
the words of a story. All right, so in order to prepare even to tell a story the next day, one I've told many, many times, and these stories were handed down to me by my mentor, my teacher who was my mentor, and she had some wonderful stories because they're from all over the world. They're not easy to collect. And she had told all of these stories to her children when they were growing up, and she's a teacher at my, at my school. And what I did, because memorization of actual, um, the, the story is not easy for me, and it's not important that it be told the same way every single time, but it needs to be close. Because we tell our stories for three weeks. We tell the same stories for three weeks. And the children get to know the stories very well. So if you leave a part out, or if you say, I tried instead of I can, they notice it. So I'm very aware of that. So the night before, I'm to tell a story that I've told many times, which I have memorized long ago. I refresh my memory because some of the details are quite important, like in the story of the little red hen. And I want to say it correctly. Uh, there's a line in there that said, with their strength united, they picked up the scissors and cut themselves out of the bag. Well, the scissors are all tucked under the uh, little red hen's wing. <laughs> she, she goes around with scissors underneath her wing. So it's important for me to remember all of that. So the night before I'm telling the story, the next day, I read it over and read it over and read it over, and then I sleep, I go to sleep. The next morning I'm up preparing to go to school and I read it again. Not because I want it to be perfectly memorized, but because I need to know it well enough that I can go to that space that I mentioned that's like an elevated space and tell that story. So it's enlivened and warmth, covered in warmth, bathed in warmth. And the children will listen all the better if I can achieve that, if I can do it without thinking I lost a word, I forgot a word, I forgot a whole phrase. It's really important just to keep telling the story. Um, one of the reasons that oral storytelling is effective and important for children, especially early childhood before the age of seven, as opposed to reading strictly to them, is because not only is it in, more enlivened, and they love it, they can feel the difference, but they're still learning their consonants and vowels. It's very important that they have plenty of nursery rhymes. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Things that have the consonants in them are very, very um, helpful in their development because it helps them, believe it or not, it helps ground them. That's part of my teacher training. That is not something I you know, necessarily um, just do for no reason. Um, any of the storytelling, uh, including nursery rhymes, is extremely important for their development. And I'm talking about what they hear and what they then are able to speak as a result of hearing it and speaking it. So if that's why Waldorf teachers take speech classes, because we're taught when we're with the children, we're very careful how we enunciate our words, especially during storytelling, because we know that they're developing language. And through language development of oral tradition, they're picking up on words and start using them uh, very, very early on. And they've heard them mostly through storytelling. So thank you for joining me on this beautiful day. And I enjoyed letting you know a little bit more about storytelling in the oral tradition and why it's so effective with young children. If you have any questions, please, you could write them in the comment column and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for listening.